Hello and welcome to my UFC 239 preview. As you can see, I am at home. I am sadly not in Las Vegas, but that has meant that I've been able to consume all of the great content that has been coming over the interweb so that I can give a more rounded perspective on what we can expect from the athletes. For this video, I would like to concentrate on European interest because there are some fantastic fights and some excellent prospects out of the region that I think that we should be concentrating on. I'm going to be starting this with Ismail Nordiev. Firstly, what a great fight name, the Austrian Wonderboy. Now, I was lucky enough to meet this kid and at just 22 years of age, he comes with such confidence. And we saw that in his debut against Michel Prescheres. He took this fight on like a couple of weeks notice. Sorry, that fight, his debut. But the way he performed was truly outstanding. Before I talk about that, I'll explain a little bit about him. So born in Chechnya, grown up in Austria, already a weird mix, but I like it a lot. Speaks English, which is great for that promotional side of things, particularly in mixed martial arts, where I think you really do get a pop if you're able to speak the English language. He has trained all over the place. So back in Austria, I think there's maybe only one or two pros in his gym. So he's on the road a lot to train. I know that he's been down to the All-Stars, Stockholm, Sweden. He's been out to American Top Team as well. But for this fight, he spent two months at Hard Knocks 365 under the legendary Henry Hooft, who always produces the very best out of fighters and now has UFC champions under his wing as well. So it's going to be interesting to see what they've done with him. Very excited about that. And also the fact that he's had a full training camp, not just come on on a couple of weeks uh, notice. That can go one of two ways. I think he was looking for the knockout in his debut against Michel Prescheres. And actually his natural cardio got him through to the end of the fight. But he had the hammer down and he, he produced a really, really explosive encounter there. Is it going to be the same this time around? I, I really don't know. But all the same, I'm very excited about Nordiev. He is like a kid in a candy shop at the moment being out in Vegas. So I know that he's going to bring it. Definitely one for the future as well. And Austrian MMA, my word, we've got Mirbek Tysimov, who I think was the first one to emerge from that area when we're talking about UFC fighters, followed up by Alexander Rakic, who we've just seen is now legitimately someone who can challenge in the top 10 of the light heavyweight division. But we also have the, Austra the, the Austrian wonder boy. I keep saying that, Australian. is nowhere near Australia. The Austrian wonder boy, Ismail Nordiev. So three guys coming out of Austria that we should definitely be keeping tabs on. And let's not forget Nordiev and that Prescheres fight. He snapped an eight-fight winning streak of Trator or Tractor. A huge, physically huge guy for the division, but he shut him down. So just keep that in mind when you're making your bets or thinking about your little tips with your friends down a pub. Moving on then, Jack Marshman, a guy who's been around the UK scene for the longest time. 23-8 and eight professional record, 3-3 three and three in the UFC. And that's important to me, and I think a lot of fighters as well. You've got that even balance, wins and losses. So this one could tip him into positive territory. He's coming in off the back of a win as well. Before that, he'd won, he'd, sorry, he'd lost back-to-back -back fights. So psychologically, he's in a much better place. Talking of being in a better place... Things going into that fight in London against John Phillips were not tuned up great for Marshman. I'm really getting the sense, reading between the lines and speaking with the camp, that as he had been tied to the, the paramilitary barracks in Colchester, he wasn't able to explore his MMA game through training. It very much had a boxing focus going into that. I'm not sure what happened to his uh, physical condition as well, but he missed weight at the same time. That said... He got the W. So despite all the odds in their eyes, he came around and got the win. So hats off to him and he marches on, if you'll pardon the pun. But interestingly, this week, he actually left the military. It's now, it's done. He is now a full-time professional fighter. So as a fan of Marshman and someone that's followed his career for a while, I'm, I'm interested to see what this will do for him as a, as a prize fighter. Will he become... And even, you know, is there going to be more time that he can put on the mats? Who knows? But for this camp, what I have learned is that he enlisted a new nutritionist 
that has meant that he had a much, much better weight cut. He hit the scales. He didn't get fined, uh, which is obviously very positive to him now that he doesn't have that second income. Uh, but more important than that, he's been back in Wales training with all of the usual guys that he does in the boxing gyms and, of course, at Tulare Combat. Uh, Richard Shaw, who heads up that team, his son Jack Shaw, who is now signed to the UFC, hasn't fought yet, but that team's going to be very positive at the moment, and Marshman's going to be coming out of that feeling alive. So this is really big for him. I don't think he's happy with the underdog status, possibly the biggest underdog on the card, but he is fighting an undefeated prospect and that guy's name is Edmund Sharbazian. He is out of the famed Glendale fight team, of course made very famous by Ronda Rousey, but they are great at producing combat sports athletes you know, from boxing to mixed martial arts. This kid is a new breed, and I say kid respectfully, but he is the youngest on the UFC roster. So he's a true mixed martial arts, true new breed athlete, nine and oh, but likes to get his work done early and via knockout. So this is a really interesting fight. I like it. I think there's gonna be fireworks and look out for an early finish as well. But let's see the veteran who has been in there with Thiago Santos who headlines and Antonio Carlos Jr. against this young prospect, nine and oh, I think it was seven oh coming to the UFC took at the UK zone Darren Stewart to a split so he can go into deep water I don't think he does it very often but he's coming up against a true veteran of the game in Marshman who has a different look about him now so I certainly wouldn't write him off moving along then to Arnold Almighty Allen Triple A 14 and 1 5 and 0 in the UFC but probably isn't getting as much love as he deserves he hasn't had the opportunity to gather much momentum, much like Israel Adesanya did, where he was fighting so regularly and with big wins, it was garnering a lot of attention. Of course, Israel does a great job outside of fighting as well. But even so, I feel like Arnold Allen is the, is the kind of fighter who has an exciting style that can get people talking about him, but he needs to be out there more regularly. Now he has that opportunity to be fighting like three, four times a year. And this is as big a fight as he's ever had. The biggest name for sure, Gilbert Melendez. This one was set up to go down in November of 2018. Didn't happen. And I think that delay might work well for Arnold Allen. He's a young man and now has even greater amount of time on the mats under the very skilled eye of Faraz Zahabi and all of the great training partners that make up the TriStar fight team. So he's going to be further along in his development, whereas Gilbert Melendez, who has been out for a long time, he is, well, he's already spoken about retirement. So he is at the, the twilight of his fighting career, probably not adding as much stuff to his game as what a, a relative young man like Arnold Allen would be. So that's going to be very much in Arnold's favour. But let's not take away from the fact that he is fighting the former strike force lightweight champion, a man who's been in the camps of some of the greatest fighters that have ever walked into the octagon, some of the most popular. I'm talking, of course, the likes of the Diaz brothers. So you can't underestimate him despite his time out from competition. And I think it's been like, well, October 2013, maybe the last time that he won in the UFC. So it's been a long time for him. But this is therefore a big fight for him. There's not a lot of pressure on this one. And if he can go out there and do something against Arnold Allen, then, you know, he, he gets right back in there and with some momentum, taking out a, a young stud. Uh, but let's talk about Arnold then uh, as we wrap up the young people out of Europe that are fighting this weekend. If he can do this and get a win over Gilbert Melendez, that is absolutely massive for him. Um, I did a documentary with him where I actually went down to his home in Ipswich, spent the day. I'll link that up in whichever way I, I put this out. But I, I urge you to go and watch it because you, you get a real sense of who he is. He's a not a shy character, but he's certainly not like Conor McGregor, Darren Till that have come out of the UK. He likes to get his head down and do his work, but he's definitely got something about him as as Arnie. R really a, quite a funny guy when, when the cameras are off, but more than that, a true mixed martial artist who enjoys developing his skill set, a standout amateur boxer who has added to 
his professional resume with some very, very tricky uh, ninja choke submissions. I think he's hit two now against very good competition. Um, uh, who was the first guy? The first guy, the Alan, Alan, Alan thing, uh, Alan Omer. I'm referring to uh, Dan Hardy's commentary. And then Mads Bunnell, who's been looking fantastic ever since he, he lost to Arnold Allen and a legitimate uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. So we know that Arnie can tussle in those ranges. He's got the boxing as well. Um, can get scrappy. Does he want to do that against a veteran? I'm not sure. But, but that fight right there is a really exciting one indeed. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. Great opportunity for Arnie to be down in uh, the United States as well. And of course, Las Vegas is the first time that he's had a business trip to the US. So big things for him if he can get ahead here and beat the veteran Gilbert Melendez. So there you have it. A few European prospects up at UFC 239. You've got to keep an eye on them. You've got to give them your support because they could be the next to be flying the flags for their respective countries as they soar up the rankings if they get big wins this weekend. Thanks very much for watching this. Catch you next time.